What's up guys, Tim Little. Welcome back to Tactical Bassin. Today we are talking about drop shotting swim baits and why you should be doing it. We're gonna cover some key baits, some key casts and techniques, some tips to help you guys catch more fish during this fall transition and into fall. So why a drop shot? You know, most of us, we drop shot our favorite four inch worms, five, six inch worms, whatever it may be. But for me in the fall, as these bait fish are schooling up, as the bass are corralling them and really getting on those bait balls and feeding up for winter, a swim bait on a drop shot is a must. One of the key reasons that I like throwing a swim bait as my bait fish profile bait on a drop shot is the tail swims everywhere it goes. It's just giving it that more natural presentation, that realistic look. So when those fish are down there staring at your bait, analyzing it, just one more thing that your normal, your traditional drop shop worm doesn't have, that little kicker tail right there. Now later on I'm going to cover the gear and the, and the three key baits that I use, but I wanted to cover why a swim bait and why you should be using it. You know, when I take this, this drop shot and I fire it out, I can fish it a bunch of different ways. You know, right now it's falling vertically. It's falling straight down on slack line and it's swimming to the bottom. But let's say I have my side imaging or my 360 going on and I have a school of fish on a bait ball over to the left or right or maybe out in front of me off of the boat. What I can do, see this bait swimming back to me right now. It's not just, it's not just a worm where you shake it. If I have a school of bait out here off the front of the boat, what I love to do with the swim bait is cast it out and let it swim through the bait ball. If I keep this on a semi-tight line, it's gonna pendulum back towards me. It's gonna come towards me and it's gonna swim down and towards the boat the whole time that tail is kicking. You know, I can do that with a traditional, you know, 2.8 swim bait. I can do that with this guy right here. But what I can't do is pause it and make it suspend. That is what is key about throwing it on the drop shot. So, I'm gonna fire it out, pass my bait ball, and I'm gonna keep it on semi-tight line. Slowly reeling and lifting my rod tip. And what that's doing, that little Kitek is swimming down towards me as it goes towards the bottom. So that's just one way I like to fish them. Again, the benefit of throwing it on a drop shot, anytime I pause it or anytime I slow it down, it's gonna be suspended. It's not gonna be banging the bottom or just sitting on the bottom like a normal small swim bait that you would throw. Being realistic when these fish can sit there and analyze the bait is super important. The next reason that I want to really emphasize throwing a swim bait on a drop shot is you can fish those spot on spot, those spot on spot spots, <laughs> say that three times fast, the key structure. You know, a lot of good areas have that real special spot where those fish, that is their spot, right? With a drop shot, I can fire it out there, let it hit bottom and shake it, slowly drag it, get that tail to kick, and not cover a lot of distance, not leave that spot and bring it the bait closer to me on the boat. You know, if I throw a swim bait out, I fire it out there, let it hit bottom, I start reeling it. Every crank of that reel handle pulls that bait closer to me and away from the spot that I want to fish. If I have a drop shot, I can pick that spot that I want to fish. Let it fall on slack line. It's swimming down there. I don't know if you guys can see these fish on the graph down here. <clears throat> and now I can sit there and fish it very slow, 
very methodically, but still have that tail kick that you get with the normal swim bait, right? This little guy. But I'm not covering a lot of distance from the spot to me on the boat. I could sit there and shake it just like you normally would your favorite drop shot worm. You're just getting that ed added movement, that added realistic movement from the swim bait, the little paddle tail. I can slowly drag it. Now, if I pause a swim bait, it's gonna be on bottom. It's gonna get hung up in rocks. It's gonna be cut off on zebra mussels, whatever it may be. But if I wanna swim this like a normal swim bait, I can slowly reel it and that, tung that tungsten weight down there or lead, whatever you use, that drop shot weight is down below the bait. The bait is up off the bottom and I can slowly reel it and that bait is swimming just like a swim bait. <laughs> I just got bit. <laughs> Probably a bluegill or a crappie, but anyways, get, get refocused. Um, you can still swim it like a swim bait. You have your weight down below the bait and you don't, don't get hung up in the rocks. You don't get cut off by the zebra mussels and you can fish this bait right along bottom just to spin it up just a little bit. So the next I wanna cover the four or five ways that I like to fish a small swim bait on a drop shot. First is just gonna be the shake, your traditional drop shot sh shake. Again, you're on, your, you're on your key spot. You let your bait go down and you just shake it. Now that bait is suspended down there, just like a drop shot worm, but it's getting that tail kick, that little tail action. The next way you can fish it is just a slow drag. You're covering a lot less distance than you would with a normal swim bait, but you're still getting that swim bait presentation. Another good way to fish this slowly lift and drop your rod. So that's gonna pull that bait up and it's gonna swim down. It's gonna swim up and swim down. A lot of times they'll eat it on the fall when you go to lift up, it'll be heavy. Swim up, swim down. And that thing's just swimming. Swimming just looks like a, a joyful bait fish down there getting ready to get smoked. The next way I like to fish it is vertically. Now, if I'm fishing offshore and I have a, a bait ball and fish on it down in 20 or 30 feet, I can literally take my swim bait, my drop shot, and drop it straight down under the boat. Now, I can stop it and fish this swim bait mid column. Swim it up, swim it down, swim it up, Swim it down. Start right above that bait ball and try and get those fish that are sitting on top of that bait ball to pick that fish up. You know, we've talked about it in, in previous videos, but again, vertically fishing this swim bait on the drop shot, having it rigged on the drop shot allows you to fish it this way. You can sit there and shake it vertically. You know, pay attention to your electronics. Right now I have a fish right here on bottom. So I can drop straight down. Now I can fish on bottom with the, with the swim bait. These are all things that you can't do if you have it rigged on a traditional swim bait head and are casting and reeling. Yeah, you can lift it and hop it, lift it and hop it, but there's just so many more ways you can work it with it being rigged on a drop shot. And again, one of the other ways I like to fish it, like I said, Cast it out, leave it on a semi-tight line, and let it swim back to the boat. Very important, especially for suspended fish. If you can get this thing to come and swim through that school of fish, coming at you and dropping down, it's a great way to trigger those fish to eat, and they haven't really seen this presentation before. Now I'm on bottom, now I can work it however I want. I can slowly drag it like we talked about. I can do the slow lift, slow fall, or I can just reel it. Now it's down there swimming, 
up off the bottom. And this is where I got bit last time. So those are the different ways to throw the swim bait on a drop shot. Now I'm gonna readjust the camera and sit down and kind of go over the baits, the gear, and all that sort of stuff so you guys can see it up close. So hopefully you guys can hear me with this wind when I was making those casts and kind of explaining the different ways to fish this little guy right here. But uh, the versatility of putting a little swim bait on a drop shot as you can see, it can be fished so many different ways, so many different techniques. You get all the benefits of the drop shot, you get all the benefits of a swim bait, and when you combine those two, hopefully you guys can see the potential. Now, you can do this on a bait caster. If I'm throwing a little larger style swim bait, maybe like a four inch, I will actually step up and go to a bait caster. All the same. Uh, techniques apply all the same ways to fish it apply um, but if you want to fish bigger swim baits I would recommend throwing it on a little uh, heavier rod a bait casting rod or a heavier spinning rod let's uh, let's talk about baits first we'll talk about gear we'll talk about rods and uh, and go from there so <clears throat> This time of year, this fall transition with the colder weather coming in, I really like switching my drop shot baits from worms to bait fish profile baits. Hopefully you guys have followed along with some of our underwater footage, some of the drop shot video we did underwater showing all the different baits. Uh, what we didn't do was bait fish bait, so maybe we'll add that to the list to do, to do. but this is like a little tiny fluke. You can see how it just mimics a little bait fish really well. It's just got a little kicker tail on there, a little fork, fork tail. When you, when you take that bait fish profile and you add that tail to it, it just, it just works. I've caught so many fish throwing a little tiny paddle tail like this on a drop shot. You get all the benefits of throwing it like you would on a normal swim bait head, except for you can suspend it you can pause it, you can shake it, and uh, really get those fish that are uh, lackadaisical or don't want to commit, you can really soak it in their face and get them to, to eat. So baits, the three baits that I really like to throw, hands down, my number one is gonna be the Kitek Easy Shiner. You know, it's a little bit different than the fat, the Swing Impact Fat. It's got a lot narrower body, and uh, this applies to throwing on a swim bait head too. It just has a different action, a little bit of a rock, but it works better on the drop shot. It doesn't have that big rounded belly. It's got a smaller head so that little hook can just, you can just nose hook it uh, and you get good hook penetration. But that little Kitek, this is the three inch easy shiner, is my hand, hands down my number one drop shot swim bait. The next one that I really like is actually a bait from Mega Bass. This is called the Hasdong. The Hasdong Shad. It's a little three inch bait. Again, same bait fish profile. Got some eyes for, you know, to make it look more realistic. And again, another real soft paddle tail. As slow, the, the key with all these baits, slow shakes, real slow movements, that tail still kicks, it still, it still paddles. So that guy right there. And the other one that I use, these are my top three. This is the uh, the Damiki Armor Shad. <clears throat> Armor Shad. See, little clear profile, little little bit bigger profile than the Kitek. It's a little bit different plastic. It's more durable. I fish this in warmer waters. As the water starts getting colder, I will go to the softer plastics, the Kitek. Uh, but this guy is a is a must have. So those three, that pretty much covers my entire lineup as far as baits. Now colors, you know, I like to branch out on swim bait colors. I, one of my favorite colors for spots and smallmouth is chartreuse blue on a swim bait head. On a drop shot, it's almost the opposite. I like to go clear, realistic. You know, again, you're fishing it slower. It's gonna be soaking in front of their face. They get to examine it more. So your electric shads, your rainbow shads, something that's kind of clear with a little bit of flake. Uh, this one right here is called crystal shad. 
So any of those types of colors, again, I will link all of my favorite colors down below in the video description so you don't have to go and find them, but keep it realistic, keep it simple, and uh, you're gonna catch fish. I always rig with a nose hook. The benefit of rigging with a nose hook versus a Texas rig, weedless, a lot of times when you're soaking this bait and you're moving it slowly, the fish just come up and eat it. You won't really feel a tick or a thump or anything like that, it just gets heavy. With that exposed point, that exposed hook right there, when I go to lift up or I go to reel, it just gets heavy, that point is exposed and I get better hook penetration. Hook sets on these, since we're talking about hooks and hook sets, let it load up and just kind of just kind of load into them. You don't have to jack them, you don't have to hit them real hard. With that exposed hook, with these exposed hooks, they're gonna hook themselves as long as you apply pe pressure. On the, on the spinning setup, I'm running a, a seven foot to a seven foot two medium light to light action rod. I always throw braid to leader. This is a six pound leader, a number one drop shot hook. Uh, I really like the Owner Mosquito Light and the Trocar drop shot hooks. Those are, those are my favorites and I believe Matt's as well. And then I will run a tungsten weight. Now the benefit of tungsten, you guys that have followed us for a while, you know that you get uh, better feel with tungsten. It is a more dense material and it, it transfers uh, bottom composition better, either rock or mud. You can feel it a lot better than lead. Lead is soft, tungsten is solid. Now, the other benefit, you can use a lot smaller profile weight and get the same weight as you would if you're using a bigger lead weight because tungsten is heavier. One other tip, a lot of drop shot weights have this little pineapple head, this little wedge where you, you run your line through and you pop your line up. I've really liked these guys right here with just a loop where you actually tie your, your leader to the bait. So when that small mouth comes up, I say small mouth because they're notorious for it. They come up and they tail walk and they throw that weight all over the place. Seems like every fish you go through a weight. If you're buying tungsten, they are a little bit more money. This tip right here will save you guys money. So tie on your loop. You can still pop it and uh, get the benefit of being able to get unsnagged like, you know, on a drop shot by popping this knot right here. I only do three loops and then cinch on my normal trilene knot. So that is gear. You know, for me, hands down, my absolute favorite drop shot rod is this guy right here. This is the um, NRX, this is the 822 drop shot rod. I have fished a lot of rods on the market and hands down, this is the best of the best. I fished a lot of them, I fished a lot of them and I keep coming back to this, this rod right here. If you can afford it, it is, it is at the higher end of the price point spectrum. Um, but if you guys are looking for a awesome rod for, for drop shotting and this technique, this rod right here is money. Paired that up, that is a, a 3000 x sense by Shimano. That combo right there is pretty hard to beat. A bait caster, you can pretty much do this technique on anything that you would throw your light finesse jigs on. You know, a, uh, a medium to medium light rod or a, a two to three power. I have this paired up. This is actually the 852 uh, with an Aldebaran. Again, for me, finesse fishing, coming from that finesse fishing side, I always invested money in, uh, more money into my finesse fishing techniques because a lot of it has to do with feel. It's not like you're coming up, you're seeing a fish come up and eat a frog in front of you and it's all visual. Everything is through feel and those rods are, are top of the line for that. Budget anglers. You can do this, this technique too. Um, it, ha it has nothing to do with the gear, but a couple tips that'll help you guys to increase your sensitivity is uh, throw braid to leader. That braid transfers that sensitivity better than fluorocarbon or uh, monofilament. 
and then if you can go with the tungsten sinker because you will have more feel but again this is that little has dong that little mega bass swim bait on there you can see how small and finessey it is and it's just not intrusive and the fish just really come unglued uh, when you drag this through a school so there it is guys that is drop shotting swim baits you can go out and you can throw your favorite drop shot worm and still catch fish this is just uh, a little tweak to your already current setup right you're already drop shot and you probably already have a finesse rod and if you don't these rods I'll, I'll link them down below in the video description but take off that worm put it put on a small swim bait and it just gives a different presentation to your fish that maybe they haven't seen before you can fish it fast you can fish it slow, you can really pick those key areas apart and suspend that swim bait up off, of, off the bottom, which you can't do on a traditional swim bait setup. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully you learned something. If you did, please give us a thumbs up. Remember to subscribe to our channel. We do three videos a week for you, strictly teaching to help you guys put more bass in the boat. As always guys, we appreciate you. Have a good one.